Okay. As always, I'm hopeful <laughs> that Zoom appears to be working. Um, we're live. Good afternoon. I hope you all are enjoying your Sunday, your weekend, feeling good. Um, so I'm just so grateful for everyone just participating, asking questions, messaging me, um, and really showing up today. So it's been a really big week kind of a long week because there's been a lot to incorporate, but you did it. Even if you just did one thing, that's a great change and you can keep building on that. So keep that checklist handy, maybe print one out every week and you can add to it, change it, grow it, use it, it's yours. Um, and I would also love for you to comment what your biggest takeaway from this week's challenge was. And I would love to see um, the different things that everyone took away and learned and enjoyed. So the first thing I'd like to do is get us started with a really quick <laughs> but simple meditation. I'm gonna try not to cough my way through it. And just kind of set the mood of relaxing, connecting into each other and to ourselves. So let's get started. I want you to make sure that you're in a comfortable position. You can close your eyes, set your phone down or whatever you're looking at and just take some deep breaths in. I would actually, yeah, encourage you to close your eyes as we go through this together and really focus your attention on your breath, on the inhale and the exhale as I guide you through this. So you can just listen to my voice. Don't have to worry about anything else. And what I would have you do is place a hand on your chest and one on your belly and just really feel that difference as you focus in on that inhale. Are you breathing with your belly or your shoulders? I'm trying to get your belly to relax. And move. And any thoughts, maybe there's judgment or fear or worry or anything, just let it go, acknowledge it, say, yes, I see you, I hear you. We're not focused on that right now. We're just here to breathe. And that's all I want you to do. And as you're breathing, I want you to think of or recall a moment in your life where you experienced an immense amount of gratitude. Maybe it was something you accomplished, seeing a family member, birth of a child, whatever comes to mind, I want you to visualize it as it's happening right now. What do you see? What are the colors? Where are you? What do you smell maybe? Try to really bring yourself into that moment, focus on the feeling, where does, the gratitude lives in your body, in your chest, your heart, in your belly, in your mind, and really lean into that feeling. Now, once you feel that gratitude, bring it up to the center of your chest and put both your hands on your heart and really feel it now. Take a deep breath in as if you're breathing in that gratitude. And use your heart to expand that feeling to every cell of your body. Now I want you to visualize a younger version of yourself. It could be from last month, earlier last year, or even as a child and just stare directly into the eyes of your past self. Feel a connection with your younger self. Or even just visualize a beam of energy flowing from your heart to your younger version heart. And just really feel that deep connection to yourself. What's coming up for you? Don't be afraid to feel any feeling. Just let them all come up without judgment, without worry. And I want you to give yourself 
your past self, a really big hug, a really big embrace. And I invite you to communicate with your younger self. You know, feel what you're feeling without judgment. Say what you want to say. And say thank you to that younger part of yourself. Thank you for the ups and downs. Thank you for the life lessons. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for being you and not giving up. And sometimes when you did give up, but you still kept going, you're still here. And now I want you to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for letting you down. Sorry for making mistakes. Sorry for hurting myself and others. I'm sorry. And now I want you to say, I forgive you. You're only human. We all make mistakes. We can let things go. We don't need to hold on to this pain any longer. I forgive you fully and completely. Let's move forward together. Now I want you to say, I love you. I love you for being you. I love you for who you are. I love you for all of your gifts and qualities and imperfections. You are special and unique and I love you. And just bring your awareness back to your breath. You can put your hand on your chest and your belly again if that's comfortable for you. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you for participating in that. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have anything that you want to share, I would love to hear it. Um, any takeaways from your experience. And it's very powerful to release guilt and resentment, um, especially towards yourself. Letting go of any past mistakes that you've made. We're all human. <laughs> we all make mistakes, right? So, um, you know, it's hard to forgive yourself, it is easy to be hard on yourself and it's the hardest thing to forgive yourself, I feel like. And when we connect with our younger self or those past versions of ourselves, we can really see that we didn't know in that moment. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, And if, if we only knew what we knew now, we would go back and do so much better, but we didn't know. And that's part of the process of learning and what makes you, you in those lessons and who you become in the process is what's really important. And just strengthening that connection with yourself and that love with yourself and know that you can get through anything, okay? So let's go through a couple things. Um, I noticed that I changed my <laughs> notes a little bit. And I think what I want to start with is some things that we didn't talk about in our masterclass, because you might look at that list and go, Allison, how am I supposed to lose weight by connecting to myself and joyful movement and my nervous system? And part of you, yeah, absolutely. Like there's not just one thing that's going to help you lose weight or be healthy or feel perfect. And a lot of the things that we don't exactly talk about because it gets really complicated is the functional medicine that, that we talk about. Um, 
I just want to give you some topics that maybe you can look at and research, um, get some help with on why you might not be losing weight despite doing all of the right things, right? Um, so the first one is hormones. Most women struggle with hormones because of what's in our environment, what's hurting us, what's making us um, honestly become weaker. Bones are weaker, thyroid is weaker, we develop a more autoimmune conditions. So if you have PMS, acne, facial hair, breast pain, ovary pain, if your periods are extremely heavy, not even extremely heavy, but just heavy, you know, lasting for a long time, something's out of balance. If you're menopausal and you have hot flashes and you're, you're feeling really weak and fatigued, that's not normal either. So get some testing done. I like to do saliva or the Dutch urine test. Blood is okay. Um, and there's lots of different ways to talk about it and different prices with all that. But don't, I never recommend just going, oh, look up your symptoms and then take some herbs or something like that because everyone's different. And what, um, you might, you might guess wrong. So that's why testing is really important. <clears throat> With that, toxicity is also something that I'm really passionate about talking about because we see, I'm just going to keep saying influencers and some dietitians saying like, eat less, move more. As long as you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight. And everybody who's in a calorie deficit, who's not losing weight is like, wait, hold on. What about me? Something's wrong. And you might be called a liar. You might be told that maybe you're faking it or you're just lazy. And that's just not true. So three topic, three terms I want you to know. Xeno hormones, that's X-E-N-O hormones. Those are fake chemical hormones that are in our food, our water, our soil, everything we touch, our makeup, our shampoo, and it affects our hormones. Obesogens and diabetogens. So O-B-E-S-O-G-E-N-S, -E obesogens. These are chemicals that are made from industrial runoff that get in our water, in our soil, our products, and we take them into our body unknowingly and they cause obesity, they cause diabetes. So everyone's saying, oh, we are in such an epidemic of di diabetes and everyone's just eating too much sugar. The reality is that we're drinking and eating and using products that literally cause diabetes. And a lot of times it's, it's just not our fault that we get sick. Um, so our liver and our kidneys naturally will filter these out. However, as you know, as we learn, when you're in that stressed out state, blood flow to your liver and kidneys gets shut down and sent somewhere else so you can be in flight or fight mode. So we need to look at our home, our healthcare products, laundry soap, dish soap, makeup, all of these things, um, and as well as pesticides and plastics. Um, I don't know what it is this past week, I've seen about 15 articles about how microplastics in our food and our products get stuck in the gut and they evaluated stool from people who have Crohn's, colitis and IBS, IDD, and people who don't have symptoms. And they found people who have Crohn's and autoimmune conditions like that have 50 times more plastic in their gut. So we might be going, I have all this inflammation in my gut. I'm eating perfect. I'm taking my supplements. Why don't I feel better? A lot of it comes from our environment. Um, other things like our water pipes, PVC pipes, um, airborne adhesives like glue, building materials, business supplies, furnishing, solvents, plastics, lubricants, insect repellents, carpet tiles, body toiletries, artificial leathers, dyes, toys, and like everything we have to be aware of. Um, so think about these things. And this is why I like these incremental upgrades is because you go, okay, today or this month, I'm going to switch over my cleaning supplies, just my cleaning supplies. I'm not, I'm going to ditch the bleach and all of these chemicals. And I'm like, I use doTERRA. So we, you know, we switched everything over to the on guard line a long time ago. And now they have the abode line. So we, we switch everything to that. And then the dishwasher and the laundry pads. And then you can go to the bathroom. Like, all right, I'm going to upgrade my toothpaste because toothpaste has so many microplastics in it and glitter. If your toothpaste has glitter, throw it out. Just that is a microplastic. 
that out of what's up size you've got. Um, and then what about shampoo, conditioner, body link? Just go through these things a little bit by little bit. Build up your stores of clean products and you'll start to see that difference, okay? Um, and also for women, this is an old stat. I don't remember what year I pulled this. Um, from my courses when I was at Logan, somewhere around 30,000 chemicals a day women use on their body with their makeup, lotions, hair care, body care, nail polish, all of these things. It gets stored in fat because our body doesn't like toxins floating around in our fats, our inner, inner body causing damage. So it puts in a little water bubble and puts it in our fat. And that's another reason why it's so hard to lose weight, especially fat. So you can... <clears throat> do quite a few things to support your body. Number one, of course, you can get tested for metals, mold, toxins, and then help your body detox as well. So I like to do um, another test is called the GI map because that'll test your stool for enzymes to know how effectively you're getting rid of things. You can also take calcium, calcium deglucurate, and that will also speed up this process. You can have two or more servings of cruciferous vegetables every day to rev up the detoxification of plastics, things like cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, whatever sits well with your body, okay? And then the third way to get these products out of your body is uh, infrared saunas are also really helpful. So there's a lot to dive into there. And then of course the thyroid is something that um, a lot of people think they struggle with, a lot of people do struggle with. Um, maybe your hair is falling out, that outer line of your eyebrow is thinning or disappearing, can't lose weight, your energy is shot. So get your blood work done, number one. Know that when you look at those ranges, they're very, very large. So in functional medicine, we use uh, for the TSH, like 1.2 to 2.2, maybe 2.5 is our normal range. Get the whole panel run and make sure you always run autoimmune um, numbers on that as well. Next up is if you're told, even from me, your thyroid looks normal, it does often come down to adrenal health and stress management and brain health. So it's good to know because we can, we can actually fix those things pretty easily over time. All right. So let's do a quick recap of everything that we talked about over our five days. So day one, we started off with loving awareness and we did with our meditation today. Um, it's about having the right mindset and belief in your body's ability to heal and belief that you can take care of yourself um, because we all wanna improve our health in one way or another, right? So whether it's weight loss, whether you wanna have more energy, um, better sleep, or whatever is related to your health, I truly believe that it does start with the right mindset and loving yourself and being willing to do the things to take care of yourself, whether it's finally getting to that doctor's appointment, finally getting your blood work done, or whatever it is that you need to do for you. So with that five pound challenge checklist, the things that I feel like it really makes a big shift is forgiveness, right? Of course, we talked about forgiving others, but forgiving yourself is too, because we do make mistakes. And every day is a different version of yourself, right? When you wake up in the morning, you can decide how you want to treat yourself that day. And nobody else gets to decide how you treat yourself. Um, and serving others with love and allowing yourself to be served with love and receive love is also just as important. Um, putting a positive and intentional effort into the things that we do on a daily basis to support each other, show love, um, and doing those things in a simple way of, um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but showing that you love and you care um, is just a great way to really enhance your body, your vibration, and your relationships, right? And then we talked a lot about self-talk. <laughs> um, you know, if we take a few moments in silence, I always just encourage everybody to take a few moments in silence every day and pay attention to the way you talk to yourself and how you look at yourself in the mirror when you get dressed, when you're doing your hair, as you're walking out, like really pay attention to that 
and see how negative or positive it is. I think you'd see a huge difference. And when it comes to gratitude, like really having gratitude, it's such a powerful practice to help shift our mindset. There's so much going on in the world right now. Um, it just seems to like only get more and more and more overwhelming every day, right? And it's, if you take that in, inside of you, it's really scary. And the scariest part for me and what I found in talking with my patients is realizing we don't have as much control as we really want to believe we do, right? And that stirs up anger and fear and worry. And we lash out at others, we lash out at ourselves. We dive into our bad habits or really not bad habits, but our coping habits, alcohol, food, drugs, social media, scrolling, things like that. So focusing on gratitude and just when we're out here, right in the world, and we're looking at all the bad things going on, <clears throat> it almost feels selfish. But if we narrow that focus into our life, just us, what's surrounding us, what can you immediately touch? What are you immediately grateful for? Grateful for my coffee. I'm grateful for my candles. I'm grateful for my beautiful lamp that I just got. And then, all right, what's what's the next layer beyond that? Okay, I'm grateful for our home. I'm grateful for my children that are healthy. And like, really bring it in to make it personal. And only then can you go out and affect change. Okay. So with this, with this gratitude, um, let's talk about autonomic caring because that was our day two. So we talked about our triggers, people, places, things. I also talked about um, our physical triggers that can um, trip us up, like hormones. <laughs> if you're PMSing, you're not going to deal with things the way you would on a day when you're feeling your best, right? Or um, overwhelm, overstimulation. Adults get overstimulated just as much as kids do. We just don't talk about it. And if you're overstimulated, you cannot function the way you need to. Um, let alone the things we talked about at top, where you're going to have brain fog, your energy is going to be shot, you're not going to be creative, you're not going to be motivated. So noticing our triggers, knowing how to cope and manage them in an effective way, get to that underlying cause. So maybe we fix your hormones, you don't have TMS, or we help your brain so you're not as overstimulated, or you have better coping tools, things like that. And this is just a really important part of self-healing and self-development, that personal growth is knowing where triggers come from, where can we dig deeper, uh, who can we talk to who's a therapist or counselor who specializes in this and specializes in trauma, not just trauma informed, but like specializes in trauma. Um, people who do EMDR are usually the best at this. Where did it come from? What happened in your childhood? How many have you seen this before? Being an observer of your life of who you are as you move through your life, your emotions, your breath, your body, how you feel every day. Um, and again, it's just a lot of it comes down to observation because you can't change what you don't know is broken, right? So just that observation going, wow, like I'm really tense all the time. I wonder where this is coming from. Or um, gosh, I'm always sucking in my belly. There's so much tension in my belly. I never just relax and let loose. Like, where is that coming from? How is that ingrained into my body? I never breathe right. My lungs always hurt. Like noticing, and then you can start to work on those things. And the best way, again, is to just narrow down into yourself and focus in on that present moment. Focus on, on your breath. Um, breath really grounds us in to the present moment. Closing your eyes, closing, closing your ears, as much as you can, like minimizing that. And if you're struggling with anxiety, with depression, with um, you know all of the mood things that come up, this is almost even more important to give yourself that peace and that time, right? Mm -hmm. And understanding those triggers too. And I'm not here to say that if you do deep breathing and fix, fix your nervous system, you're not gonna have anxiety anymore. No, not at all. It takes work to be able to do these things. Okay, hold on, I gotta see. Nope, no comments. Okay, um, here we go. So, talked about being on the breath and we get too far into the future. So whether it's, if we're worrying about the next day or what's going to happen, make notes, journal, get your post-it notes out. 
just start writing things down and really allow yourself to express who you are, okay? And one thing we talked about, I think we talked about this, is pairing your nervous system with your current task. So if you're getting ready to sit down and eat a meal, you want to be relaxed. You want to be in a calm state. You want your digestive system to have all the blood and all the power and all the focus. You don't want to be distracted. We don't want to do anything stressful while we're eating. Um, and you want to be able to calm your body down, shift into that parasympathetic state. If you're stressed out, if you're driving, if you're watching TV, if you're having a stressful conversation, you're not going to digest your food. You're not going to get the nutrition. You're going to have acid reflux, IBS. You're going to feel like crap, right? So shifting into that deep breathing is really, really important. Um, and then last one on that list was choose, chill, cherish, and check. So that's our five-step process to focus in on digestion, um, getting into that parasympathetic state with some deep breathing, going for a walk either before or after you eat to improve your digestion, to calm your body down. Um, also after dinner to help us sleep as well, thinking about who prepared your food, how it got here, focusing in on that gratitude and knowing that the way we view our food is going to affect our body as well. So maybe you can't afford to eat the best food and you feel really bad about that and you're eating like canned green beans and or like the best thing you could afford this week was the cheapest frozen pizza. Okay, it's okay because in this moment you have food, you're going to enjoy it. You're gonna sit maybe with your family or a pet or call a friend. Find the joy and the love and the gratitude in that moment. And if you are able to eat clean and organic and cook beautiful meals, focus in on that as well. So wherever you are, Find that gratitude in the moment without judgment. Um, and then we talked about chewing, you know, to chew. And then, of course, checking, checking our stool. I ask all my patients, do you have any blood or mucus on your stool? And they're like, I don't know. Well, is it formed? Do you have diarrhea? Like, I don't know. It's like, okay, well, these are her big telling signs. Um, you can diagnose a lot of things going on just by looking at your stool. So make sure to check, let your doctors know what's going on, check for blood, brown, colors, mucus. It's just like white stringy stuff in your stool. Um, super fun, right? Okay. A, ooh, I didn't write the day down. A three, where's my checklist? Oh, it's okay. It's in here. Um, <laughs> blood sugar stability, when to eat. Um, because our body should be prioritizing rest and healing at night. And that's when our body detoxifies, it focuses on sleep. And we need to limit snacking so our body can not have to focus on digestion, but it can focus on resting, growth hormone, healing, um, letting the brain rest and do the things that it needs to do, um, getting rid of waste and toxins that have been building up um, throughout the day. Another thing about timing with food is I know a lot of people like to snack while they're watching TV and because TV puts you in a mindset of consumption, right? So naturally you're consuming TV and then you're consuming food. It does become really mindless. Every, everybody does it. It's just because we were turned off, we're not present. And the, the, the bag of Oreos, I'm like I'm just going to have three, then all of a sudden becomes the whole row. And then before you know it, it's gone. And we're like, who ate all these or chips or something, right? Because we're just, we're just like in that motion. Um, so try to establish a routine, especially around snacking. If you're the kind of blood type, blood sugar type that needs to eat consistently throughout the day, set timers on your phone. Don't eat outside those timers. And I mean, I, I think that goes for everybody, especially if you're intermittent fasting or you're just doing three meals a day. Don't go outside of that schedule because you're going to keep your blood sugar on that roller coaster. You're going to um, not have the healing effects that you're supposed to from it. Um, and then of course, eat as much organic food as possible. Be present when you're eating, focus in on like anti-inflammatory foods and that can be different for everyone. Um, 
so learn your body, trust your body, get food sensitivity testing done, or just play around with different foods, experiment, and don't be afraid to track and track your symptoms as well. Um, I did post that Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 post in the group, and then um, a vegetable spray wash as well for you in there. <clears throat> so make sure you clean your veggies, get rid of those pesticides, possibly even plastics, um, especially if they come prepackaged in plastic, um, like lots of our veggies are, um, and fruits can be as well. Try to avoid frozen food. Um, I know a lot of people like it in the winter, but it's frozen in that plastic and then never ever heat up your food in the microwave in a plastic bag. That's just asking to be turned into plastic with hormone issues and gut issues. It's, it's just, it's not worth the risk. It's pro-inflammatory. We talked about IBS and Crohn's. It's just going to ruin your gut, ruin your blood sugar. Um, and go back to that graphic of people who have low blood sugar and high blood sugar, and you can be mixed. So find the eating pattern that's going to work best for your body. Okay. Don't skip meals. Don't skip food. Don't just eat carbs and you're going to feel like crap. So you got this. All right. Day four, we focus on rest and recovery and all the rules that you know already. You're not supposed to watch TV before you go to bed. Um, part of this makes me feel like we need to go back to treating ourselves like children. <laughs> what would you do with your toddler? You don't rile them up before bed. You don't watch a hilarious movie and scroll through YouTube. You don't feed them a bunch of snacks before they go to bed and, and juice and let them go to bed with a bottle. And you're gonna, you want the room to be darker. You want everybody to calm down. You're probably gonna give them a bath and get them in a cozy PJs and read a book. Treat yourself like a baby. You deserve it. <laughs> okay. So no, um, especially social media, because it's triggering the dopamine. It's excitatory. It's addictive. Um, and then you're looking at a screen. So you're getting blue light. So your melatonin is going to be really low. Um, so make sure if you have to be on a screen to either use the blue light blocking glasses or the filter. Um, on your phone or your laptop, whatever it is to minimize that blue light. We talked about getting over, or not using overhead lights at night, but using ones that are lower to the ground, like tabletop, nightstand, so your brain is more triggered into nighttime. Shift your bulbs to that lower tone <clears throat> at night, and that way it will help um, support that melatonin. You'll make more as well. And then of course, make sure that you're getting more daylight during the day. So waking up, getting some light on your eyes, getting some movement in or getting a lamp if that's what you need to do. Okay, um, getting in bed by 10 p.m. Really getting asleep by 10 p.m. because our best sleep recovery and support and detox is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And if you're up and you're drinking and you're watching TV and you're stressed out, you're not going to rest and recover the way that you need to. You're going to be sleep deprived when you wake up. You're going to have cravings. You're going to want to eat junk. You're not going to feel good. You're not going to take care of yourself. And we just really create this vicious cycle. So try, try to get to sleep by 10 p.m. Um, and find different ways that you can shift your schedule around. And then um, kind of like a baby, we want our room to be really dark and cool. We don't want a bunch of extra stuff around us like our phones and lights and noises. So find things, a ways to keep your room nice and cool and comfortable and just sleep focused for you. Get rid of the TV. I said to put, I like to put my phone in the bathroom. Um, so that way it's not, one, it's not right next to my head. And two, um, I have to get up and to go get it in the morning is also really helpful. Um, and then... EMF, so electromagnetic frequencies from phones, from devices can affect a lot of people, especially if you're really sensitive. So turn, try a week of unplugging or turning off your Wi-Fi at night and keeping your phone away from your head or, or anything electronic away from your head and your body. You might see a really big difference. 
right? And then day five, we talked about joyful movement and finding ways to incorporate movement into your life. So ideally exercise and movement looks like 20 minutes of continuous movement um, at one time, getting your heart rate up. So some people tell me, well, I get up from my desk and, and that's great, that's wonderful. But to improve your cardiovascular system, to improve your blood sugar, to get the benefits, especially if you're concerned about weight loss, it needs to be about 20 minutes. Um, but it could be something that you love and enjoy. It doesn't have to be pure torture. It can if you love pure torture, but that's different for everybody, right? So whether it's yoga, uh, dancing, uh, Pilates, weightlifting, maybe you just run up and down the stairs at work for a little bit. Um, whatever helps you let the stress go is really what it comes down to. Things that help support your body instead of causing more inflammation. And the key is to find something that you love so it's not forced because you'll want to be consistent with it because you'll look forward to it. It won't be torture or painful. And we talked about how blood types need different types of workouts like O's are great weightlifters and A's are great yoga people, especially for their body types. Now they can do both. The key is you don't wanna overtrain. If your muscles are super sore afterwards, like you can't go up the stairs, that's overtraining, it's causing too much inflammation. If you have to take a nap after you work out, whether it's 30 minutes or two hours, it's too much. And you wanna watch your heart rate, especially if you have autoimmune conditions, PCOS or hormone issues, because going too hard too fast is going to increase that attack in your body. And then you're gonna flare and you're gonna be out for two weeks or a month or six months, depending on how hard you hurt your body. So take things easy, take things slow, find what works for you. <clears throat> and don't compare yourself to anybody else, anybody else's food, anybody else's program, anybody else's exercise, let alone their body. You are you, you are unique and you need to find out what works for you, okay? Um, and then I wanted to share a little bit about my morning routine, because a lot of these things that we talk about in our morning routine, or our evening routine in this challenge also applies to our morning routine. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. So you can pick just a few things, like you don't have to do everything. I don't even get to do everything every single day, but make time, figure out what's more supportive for your body and then keep moving forward. So we talked about enjoying the sunlight in the morning because you get so much more units of light, which activates your brain, your cortisol awakening response. It'll give you more energy, um, feel so much better throughout the day. So at least look out the window, maybe bring your coffee outside for a little bit while you're waiting for the dogs to go to the bathroom. Um, and this is gonna help you sleep a lot more too. So I like to say, wake up, get your toothbrush, go brush your teeth and stand outside and look out the window at the sun. If you don't have the sun because it's so early in the morning and it's not up yet, get a little morning light. Um, and then honestly do a little bit of joyful movement in the morning because that also helps support your cortisol, your awakening response, your circadian rhythm. <clears throat> ideally, ideally, it's like something you want to get your heart rate up with. So like lunges, dancing, jumping jacks, punching, what, whatever it is for you, get your body moving. Um, that will also decrease inflammation. Just don't overdo it, okay? Um, then you want to drink your water in the morning. So that can be done very easily, uh, 16 to 20 ounces at least. Then... My rule with food, if you're eating, if you're drinking coffee with creamer, I know you are, you have to have food with it because you're going to spike your blood sugar. So if you're like, well, then I get my coffee and my creamer and then I don't eat for an hour, your blood sugar is going to do this and then you're going to crash and then no, don't have your coffee until you eat breakfast. So eat your breakfast. If you don't eat breakfast because maybe you're fasting or intermittent fasting, then no creamer or sugar in your coffee. Okay, I love you. I'm sorry. And then, <laughs> we'll skip it real quick. You focus in on that daily gratitude, or I like to do my gratitude at night. So I like to do my positive affirmations in the morning. 
and write them out, maybe recite them. Sometimes I do the same thing every day, I just write them down real quick. I love to get out my Healy frequency device and put it on, it scans your energy for the day in that moment. And then it gives you, um, feeds you frequencies to elevate, but it has positive statements in there and they change every day. So I write those down as my positive statements for the day. Okay. Then make sure you eat your breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up to fuel your body after fasting all night. <clears throat> and then you're going to start feeling better once you start eating breakfast consistently, I promise. Um, and it's not about making things complicated. It's really about upgrading what you're already doing and creating systems in place. So it's kind of like already done. So maybe for you, it's oh, I have so many things to do in the morning. So part of your night routine becomes, well, how do I make this easier? Okay, well, my dinner I'm going to take and I'm going to make extra dinner, but I'm going to keep that extra as my lunch, put it in my Tupperware, put it in the fridge. All right, lunch is ready to go the next day. Maybe you have your coffee or your hot water tea set on a timer. So at five o'clock in the morning, coffee is already brewing or water is already warming up. and is good to go. Things like nighttime crock pots or Instapots are my favorite because you can set your timer on your Instapot and at like three o'clock in the morning, it'll start cooking whatever it's cooking. And then by the time you get out of bed, breakfast is ready. So simplifying things to make your life easier, creating systems is going to be the best thing. Um, and then the other thing I like to do in the morning is my meditation. Um, part of it is because when I have the most time to myself and I get to do it. So whenever you can do it, um, get it done. Three minutes can be powerful. Five minutes can be powerful. The best amount of time is 20 minutes. And that's what research shows really helps our brain and supports us in a great way. So, okay. Um, take your supplements, take your pills, get yourself taken care of. All right. <clears throat> um, I don't think I had any extra questions. Um, we had a couple things that I answered in the group. So if you have any questions, comment, message me, I'll get back to you um, and we'll take care of you. So ah, thank you so much for being here. I have a couple things, um, kind of housekeeping and offers specials for you. So number one, we have our prizes that I'll be giving out next week. Everybody who writes either writes a testimonial or does a video testimonial, you can message me one if you prefer it to be anonymous, that's fine too, get a prize and you get to pick from the list. There's a lot, I don't decide for you. You get to pick whether you want a diffuser, an oil kit, um, French press, uh, yoga mat. I had a couple, I have a big list. So um, you get to pick out what you want. The next thing I do is I have also a thank you survey. So if you have any thoughts, ideas, um, and then you get a free um, ebook from me and a course from me for filling that out as well. And then of course, functional medicine, because for you, for me, I should say, whenever I do courses, I'm like, this is great. And then I'm like, okay. And then I go to my real life and I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? I don't know. Does this make sense for me? She said so many things in the course and you learn so much, but then it's like, how do we apply it for ourselves? So if you feel like personalized help is the next best thing, um, there's a code. It's in the description here to get $50 off your initial consultation. And what we do in that initial consultation is different now. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up of what you get. I no longer offer free calls. However, you can Facebook message me if you would like. Um, we could talk some things through. But I found that we don't get to get through a lot of answers in a 30-minute call. Talk about your goals. What I want, I want to get to work. I want you to have the resources and support you need right away. So what that looks like is you click the link, you pick the package that you want, whether you want just a console or you want to add in your blood work for, for really cheap and just get that done and over with started. I think that's the best option. Um, and it's about a thousand dollar panel, but you can get it for about $150. So you save a ton of money with the blood work, really in depth work. Then you get an email with all of the links to fill out your online paperwork, your health history forms, your symptom survey forms, of course, HIPAA, 
is on there as well. I get all those. If you do blood work, we wait till we get the results. Then you can schedule. There's a link to schedule online as well, your initial consultation. And what you get from me is right now, I think it's about an eight page report. And it has what's going on with you, what I think is going on from a functional perspective based off of your blood work, your tests. You can send me your past tests too. A lot of people do that. Um, we go through your goals. We go through my goals. We go through like what can be achieved, what we're going to look at. Um, are we looking at numbers on blood tests? Are we looking at symptoms? What, what, like what's going on for you? And then you get supplement recommendations, food, meal planning, uh, recipe guides, uh, snack ideas, fitness plan that's based around you, um, testing, because testing is really important. I would say most people need some tests, but not everybody's different. And it's also not mandatory in my practice, but blood work is mandatory. <laughs> so, so maybe you need a toxicity test. Maybe you need a hormone test. We, we talk about all those options and then we talk about consultation options as well for you. So that way you have accountability and support moving forward. So um, that's what you get. I'm very excited. Um, I love working with people on a deeper level and really just moving forward fast. I don't want you to have to wait to feel better. So, okay. Let me scroll through my notes. I don't think I have any comments right now or any other questions. So <clears throat> I'm looking at my notes. So I just really appreciate you being here um, and taking the time to really work on yourself, try some new things, reach out and talk to me. And I really appreciate you guys. So Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will talk to you soon and have a great day.